A lesson I've learned growing up poor is something I can teach you in the form of a question. Let me ask you this. What is the difference between too little and nothing at all? If you grew up broke like I did, you'll understand the answer to that question is nothing. Whether you're $1 short on rent or a half glass of water too low in the desert, you're dead either way. The experience of growing up poor is one where you learn that too little and nothing at all are practically the same because they all mean failure. The state of housing in America right now is such that the average person cannot afford a home, much less a down payment. My partner and I are both college educated. We have bachelor's degrees in competitive fields that pay pretty well and we will never be able to afford a down payment on a house. We probably wouldn't be able to pay it off within our lifetimes. So like a lot of Americans, we've chosen to do something that is in line with the average person for once in our lives. We're going with the flow and we decided to buy this. This is a Ford Express 3500 box truck. We paid around $20,000 for it, which is a stupid amount of money for someone who says they're financially conscious. So you may be wondering, what is it we're going to do with it? We're going to do what everyone else is doing. We're going to be building a tiny home inside of this box truck. All right, so just to get more of the technical specifications out of the way, uh, this is a 2020 box truck. Um, it is a V8. It's got 6.0 liters. Um, and as we bought it for around $20,000, it has about 140,000 miles on it as it stands. Uh, let's take a look at the box on the back because that's going to be the most interesting. In terms of physical dimensions, this box truck's internal box is 15 feet long by six and a half feet wide, and it's about seven feet tall. So that gives me room. I'm about six feet tall, so I can walk around really comfortably in here. One of the best additions that came with this box truck straight from the dealer was the inclusion of this ceiling ventilation fan that we have. This will help draw all the hot air that builds up inside of here out of the van, though we may not need it because of what we plan to add to this box truck in time. Now, one of the things we chose this particular box truck for was its material design and construction. The walls are supported by aluminum rails and the walls themselves are made out of, I believe, 3 8 inch plywood and the ceiling is supported with aluminum rails and plywood as well. At this time, we've literally only had this box truck for maybe like two or three days. Um, and we're really just in the process of planning and deciding how we want to convert this into an off-grid tiny home. Um, and just those words themselves make me a little bit worried because I don't love the ethos and a lot of the culture surrounding like van life and uh, homestead building and uh, I think that a lot of what you see online from like influencers these are people that are coming from like generational wealth um, that had daddy and mommy and, and grandparents and they got perfect jobs and I, I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people that are coming from privileged backgrounds even more than my white ass um, which if, if, if that sort of me being considerate of the nature of privilege thing bothers you, you're in the wrong YouTube channel. Um, I, I, I worry because I, I see a lot of people do this sort of thing and I don't see enough transparency about how they came to be able to access the money to make this happen. The one thing that a lot of you might already know if you've watched my former videos is that I'm a wee bit handy, you might say. Um, I can weld, I can frame, I can do electrical. I don't really know how to do plumbing and I recently learned how to do basic HVAC. <laughs> the most recent things I learned just to build out this box truck and make this thing happen. But these are skills that go back to when I was like 12 that I've been building up for years because I came from a family of people where the option was to build your way out of poverty, not buy your way out, build your way out. My father was a mechanic. He was a steel worker. I built and engineered things to make my money. I worked as a, a welder and a mechanic and I did all these kinds of jobs growing up where I built things to make money. I repaired things. I physically built things in order to lift myself out of poverty, which similarly, I don't want this box truck to be uh, a center point for the argument that uh, social mobility, financial, socioeconomic mobility 
I don't want this box truck to be like evidence that that exists. Because I, I think this came down to luck. Um, as much as I can say that we saved for this and I will teach you all about how we saved for this and how we plan to make this happen, uh, a lot of this comes down to luck. And I don't like the idea that box trucks and tiny homes and van life and all these things are some sort of like hopeful solution to the state of housing right now. I think this is actually depressing. Yes, does it suit my needs and am I happy that I'm going to do it? Absolutely. But <laughs> that's like finding a med kit in the middle of a war zone. Like, yes, this is a good thing, but it's kind of awful that this is necessary. So throughout my time making these videos, talking about homesteading and van life and all this other millennial, you know, socioeconomic escapism crap, um, I'm going to titrate a lot of that with a realistic perspective on the fact that this is not the best outcome. This, this is a person trying to cope. Um, if, if I'm being indulgent in any way to the average person, it's the fact that this will help me make it so I don't have to work 40 hours a week until I'm 70. Um, that will be a benefit, right? The fact that I don't want to rent until I am dead, which frankly, I think everyone in the world deserves that right. I don't think everyone should have to work 40 hours a week until they die. I think it's valorant and great that you can work hard for your family, but I don't think that you should have to do that with a human life. I think society could be better than that. Um, so yeah, as we make these videos and, and, uh, and talk about converting this and, and how it's going to enable us greater socioeconomic freedom and more opportunities, I'm going to titrate all of that with the perspective that this is a privilege and most of it came down to luck and the fact that things worked out for me in a certain way and I was able to save and, and make cost adjustments in my life in certain ways to afford this and I had skills and even the fact that my family was poor and had to be builders to build our way out of poverty, that was a privilege too. I had connections to people who could teach me how to become handy and learn how to DIY everything. Um, all of those are privileges. And, and I think that those should be considered when people are talking about their like, here's my $500,000 off-grid RV. Um, I already told you the price of this truck was around $20,000. It has 140,000 miles on it and it's a 2020. You may be wondering how it has that many miles, but is that new? It's because it was an enterprise rental truck. So it just got a heck ton of miles, even though it's kind of newish. Um, we are expecting the final cost of all the parts of the inside of this box truck to be around $10,000. So that is $30,000 for a 15 foot by seven foot ish mobile tiny apartment. Um, which in the United States compared to the cost of an average home, yeah, that's pretty good in my opinion, but it's still expensive, right? And I will talk to you about how we access this money and what it is we did to get to this point. But I do not want to sell you on the narrative that America is a meritocracy. It is not. This came down to luck and capitalizing on opportunities, not because I worked especially hard. That was not rewarding. It was a bunch of other mischievous lines of thinking and creativity that got me here. It was not because I worked hard. It was because I got lucky and I had access to some privileges. Now, the fact that I chose to do this in the particular way that I did is down to me. That is my responsibility. Um, but again, I don't want to sell this as some sort of perfect solution to the dystopian life that Americans are currently living in. This is, this is not all sunshine and rainbows. This is a med kit on a battlefield. This is... <laughs> Uh, uh, something good in a bad context. Um, and again, it was one with luck and privilege. I don't think that <sighs> this is something that everyone should be able to plan on doing to, you know, work their way out of poverty. Um, because I think that myth is, is overrated and, and frankly dangerous. Um, so that's a depressing way to talk about this hopeful, fun thing that I am doing. This is hopeful for me, like I'm excited. Um, I like building things. I don't like having to rent until I'm dead. Um, yeah, like I, I'm excited for this. I'm gonna get to travel to some extent, though I will be working still. Um, welcome to our version of living in a van. I don't wanna call it van life though. I don't really wanna call it homesteading. And I don't really wanna call it any of that sort of stuff. This is just our box truck. Oh, and I guess I should probably introduce like, what is the design layout for this thing? Like, what are we building inside of it? Um, over here, we're gonna put a bunk bed. We have bunk beds. Um, a big part of my design philosophy will be surrounded 
the idea of upcycling and reusing things I already have. So we are renting a house, we have furniture, we're gonna cut it apart and use it as much as possible. So we have a cute bunk bed, it's fools. I'm gonna weld and make it a lot bigger and a lot sturdier so it can hold our queen. Um, we have a little folding futon down here that we're going to put our battery system underneath. Then we're going to figure out some sort of basic kitchen, water tank and water pump situation in the midsection of the truck. And then where you are currently located, which is the rear doors of the truck, um, the air conditioner is going to be mounted outside. We're gonna be using a heat pump that I'm going to set up myself. And then the inside part of it, I think that's the low pressure side, I can't remember. The part that blows cool air or hot air when you want it, that's gonna be mounted to one of these walls as well. Um, so there are four systems that we have to approach to anyone who's ever worked as a contractor. You'll know these four systems, right? We've got electrical, we've got plumbing, we've got framing, framing and then we've got interior design and furniture. Um, I wanted all of those things to happen one after the other, but that's just not how this works. This is a tight space with weird compromises. We will be doing several things at once kind of all the time. And I will make videos of things as I see fit, like while we work on them. I would like to keep this entire build to like less than six videos because I really don't want to flood my channel with van life content. I don't want people thinking that's like my whole modus operandi or anything. Um, but I do like building things. So I will document occasionally what we're doing. For example, today, um, you won't see this, this will be a later video, but today we'll physically be working on the bed frame and getting it welded and seeing if it fits correctly with our design. So yeah, that is the basic plan. Solar panels up top, electrical, plumbing, framing, everything, all at once, all the time. Um, technically I have seven months to do this. I think I'm gonna get it done in like under three, probably. 